welcome to art mind today we are learning the background eraser tool in photoshop the background eraser tool is located under the eraser tool and its shortcut is e first i'm going to give you a general overview suppose i want to get rid of just this blue background i'll take the eraser tool over here to sample the blue color how do we sample we just click and hold so now photoshop knows we want to get rid of just this blue color so now even if i drag the eraser tool over the camera it won't get erased you can see that it's erasing nothing but the blue background color i'm gonna finish the whole thing now we are going to look at the sampling options first i'll explain sample once the eraser is going to sample the color underneath this crosshair the first time we click and hold. So I'll click and hold. The red color is sampled. So now it's going to erase nothing but the red color. So as I move, red is detected and they are getting erased. But as soon as it detects blue, it stops erasing. Here as well, it detected yellow and didn't erase them. Next, we have continuous sampling. This basically lets you erase all the pixels like a normal eraser tool. The crosshair is going to sample the red underneath it and that's why it deleted it. The sampling process however doesn't stop here. As I move, it's still sampling the pixels underneath it and then deleting them. It will be more evident when the crosshair reaches the blue section. I'm gonna move slightly. You can see that the crosshair is now on the blue. The eraser is gonna sample it on the go. Meaning, I don't have to click again to sample it. So the mouse button is still held. And as I move the eraser, it's gonna sample the blue and delete them. Same with the yellow pixels. Last we have sample background swatch. It's a totally different method of sampling colors. Suppose I want to erase just the blue color. For that, I'll click on the background swatch and then sample the blue color. So now we have in the background swatch the blue color that we want to erase. I'll take the eraser on the red and start erasing. It's not getting erased. Why? Because the eraser is not going to erase anything other than this blue color. Let's move the eraser on the blue and see if it's true. Looks like it is. Again, if you drag the eraser on this yellow, nothing gets erased. Now let's take a glance at limits. First, I'll show you contiguous. And also for this purpose, I'm going to keep sampling at sample once. I'm going to move the eraser until the center crosshair reaches this point. Why? Because I want to place the eraser in such a way so that all the yellow pixels from this crosshair spread contiguously on this part of the eraser. However, you can see that there's a disconnect of the yellow pixels with the crosshair on this part of the eraser. We have this red bar in between them, right? So these yellow pixels are basically discontiguous. Now since on the limits option we selected contiguous, only the yellow pixels which are contiguous with the crosshair are going to be deleted. So let's put that to test. I'm gonna click and there you go. Now there's another thing that I need to show you regarding the contiguous limit. Now like before I'm gonna take the eraser over the edge so that the crosshair of the eraser is on this side and the rest of the part of the eraser hangs on this side. So what the eraser is gonna do is that it's gonna sample the yellow pixel beneath it and then it's gonna delete the other same yellow pixels which are contiguous with this crosshair. So I'm gonna click and hold. So this part was deleted because it was contiguous and these yellow pixels were not deleted because they were discontiguous. And needless to say, the red bar was not deleted because it was not yellow. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to drag the eraser slowly and gradually. You can see that the crosshair is now on the red and nothing has changed. But watch when the crosshair moves to the yellow. Now you can see that the yellow pixels are contiguous with the crosshair, right? And it should delete the yellow pixels now. And there you go. Now we are going to try out the discontiguous limit. And here as well, I'm going to use sample once. And like before, I'm going to take the eraser over the edge so that the crosshair is on this side and the other part of the eraser falls on this side. The discontiguous limit is very liberal. Not only does it allow the contiguous pixels to be deleted, but it also deletes the discontiguous pixels. So I'm going to try it out. And voila! Next, I'm going to show you another difference between the contiguous and discontiguous limits. And goes without saying, I'm using the sample once option here again. I'm going to quickly pull up the layers panel and show you what we have. 
So here we got this layer which is filled with pink pixels. And underneath that we have got this black background. I'm going to turn on the visibility for the pink layer and make sure the layer is selected. So basically if I erase anything on the pink layer, we should see the black through it. I'm doing this just so we have a good contrast and see the crosshair more clearly. First I'm going to go and select contiguous. I'm going to take the eraser here. The crosshair is going to sample the pink underneath and delete it. Now watch closely as I move the eraser. As long as this crosshair is still on the black, this pink region is not going to be deleted. Watch when I just cross over and the crosshair touches the pink. It detects the pink pixels and deletes them, right? And this goes on as we move the eraser along. Now we are going to try discontiguous. First it's going to sample the pink pixel under the crosshair. We'll delete them as I click and hold. And discontiguous doesn't care if it has reached over the edge. It just keeps deleting the pink pixels whenever they come within its perimeter. Last in the limits option we have find ages. But first I'm going to demonstrate the example with either of these two. I'll select contiguous. And as always, I'm using sample once. Suppose I want to get rid of the sky in this region. So I'll take the eraser there. Make sure that the sampling crosshair is on the sky. And then to erase the sky, I'll just click. You can see how part of the building is also erased, right? We don't want that. And here comes the use of find ages. In monochromatic images such as this, it's often difficult for the eraser tool detect ages. And that's why we use the find ages option. Now like before, I'll take the brush here, make sure the crosshair is sampling the sky and this time the eraser is going to distinguish the edge. Let's click now. There we have it. Next we're going to study tolerance and again I'm using sample once. First I'm going to keep the tolerance value at 1%. I'll take the eraser here on the red. The crosshair is going to sample the red pixel that is underneath it and at 1% tolerance it's essentially saying I'm not going to erase any pixel which is different from this exact red. So as I track the eraser, this is as much as it erases. It didn't erase any of the pixels from here, right? I'm going to increase tolerance a bit more to 30%. And this time the eraser should include more pixels to erase. First let's sample the red, click and drag and there you go. I'm going to try one last time with 80% and this time you can expect more colors to be erased. There's another aspect of tolerance that I want to show you and I've kept sampling at sample once. Right now we have tolerance at 1% meaning if I sample this pink it's going to erase only this pink. I'm going to ramp up the tolerance to 100 and we can expect the eraser to erase more similar colors now. There you go. Now I'm going to reduce tolerance to 55%. We can expect less colors erased than this one. And quite rightly so. Three colors were erased here and only two here. Now the important thing that I want you to take note of is that not only 55% tolerance has erased less colors than 100% tolerance, you can also notice the difference between the opacities of these two. While 100% tolerance took away so much of the purple, 55% tolerance was able to delete so little. Next we are going to discuss protect foreground color and for this example we need to use continuous sampling which essentially means the eraser erases everything. Suppose I'm careless with the eraser, but at the same time I want to erase the colors that are only within the box. Or in other words, I don't want to delete the blue outside. I'm going to be really reckless as if I cannot see and mess up the colors. So accidentally I got rid of the blue too. We don't want that. Here comes the use of protect foreground color. So first I'm going to set the foreground color to this blue. And then check protect foreground color. This essentially means do not touch the blue foreground color while I'm erasing. So I'm going to go and try to erase as carelessly as possible. You can see that I'm going over on the blue background and it's not getting erased. So this is all I have for today. Make sure to check the other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.